Well, we yeah, we may get into that, but um, it's funny you the, the area of like visual recognition of things. It reminds me. I read something years ago of the situation where I don't know if it was literally the Department of Defense or you know the Rand Corporation or whoever, but they were trying to see if they could get the AI to help with reconnaissance. And so they had, a, and specifically they were looking at area, I don't know if it was satellite photos or, you know, just an overhead plane taking photos of a good jungle setting where they were trying to sh- get the computer to be able to just look at lots of photos and see whether there were enemy troops hiding and, and camouflage ins- inside the pictures. And so they trained it. And so they took a bunch, they had, you know, their own a staged operation where they had their own troops and tanks and whatever with brush on it and so forth and took a bunch of photos with those in there and then a bunch of photos of just the forest. And then they trained the the computer and told it, okay, this first batch, yes, this is, you know, if you see something like this, you flag it and tell us that there's enemy troops there. And the other ones don't say it's all clear. And they trained it and then they tested it on the same batch of photos, but out of sample. And the computer did great. You know, it didn't miss any that were there and it gave no false positives either. And then they decided, so, hey, okay, let's go take another batch of photos. And so they did the test again with a brand new batch. And the computer flunked horribly and they were baffled. And it turned out that in the original s- training samples, it happened to be a sunny day when the, they had all the ones that did have the troops in there. And then it happened to be overcast on, the, you know, when they took the photos without it. And so the computer learned that, oh, what the military wants me to do is whenever it's a sunny day, tell them, yes, there's troops there. And when it's overcast, say no. So it had, you know, it, it just was a good example of showing how it, Right. That to us, it was obvious, like what's relevant about these photos? What's the important similarity? But, you know, to the machine, if you're just training it in that crude way with brute force, that's not going to pick that up. Oh, yeah. There are, this is this sort of problem. I, I've never heard that particular incident, but this sort of problem is kind of a classic in machine learning. You can get things overtrained on the wrong features in photographs or sound samples or all sorts of things like that. But the thing that's Interesting is that over the years we figured out how to do this stuff better and better. It used to be, it used to be pretty bad. And these days we actually can do this stuff remarkably well, which you know it's gotten to the point where you know you can have voice recognition systems that can understand that can transcribe human speech to text far better than any human being can. Image recognition systems that are you know have very very low error rates, that sort of thing. And it's been a question of feeling our way through the problems of building such systems and making enormous numbers of mistakes over the course of decades, after which, of course, it's all been an overnight success, right? Mm -hmm. You know, everyone got interested in this, I think, because in the fall of last year, OpenAI released the ChatGPT model, and suddenly everyone saw instantly, you know, from out of nowhere being, you know, decades of hard work, suddenly these systems were capable of doing very interesting things, like having English conversations with people and being able to write poetry on demand and that sort of thing. But yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of difficulties people have had over the years. Machine translation systems used to be absolutely awful in their early days. There were experiments in the 1970s. There's one, I'm sure it's apocryphal, but it's a funny story anyway, where, you know, someone ask the machine to translate out of sight, out of mind into Russian. And when it translated back from Russian into English, reputedly, it came back with invisible idiot. Um, (laughs) But uh, things aren't like that anymore. I recently had to deal with a workman who didn't speak English. And I didn't speak Brazilian Portuguese, but the AI on my phone, and almost all of us now have translation AIs on our phones, even if we are not aware that they're installed, was more than good enough for me to be able to communicate with the man, which is impressive. Uh, All of us are using AI every day these days. We don't think about it very much. We don't think of voice recognition systems uh, as AI. We don't think of the system when we get into our car that navigates us to our destination as being an AI. It's an AI. We don't think of the thing that recommends that if we liked the last, you know, 15 shows we watched, we might like one of these other shows as being AI. But all of these things are AI of various kinds. Can you maybe uh, it's become just, ubiquitous now. Yeah, maybe can you give the listener a, a, a definition of sorts, even if it's just like a working one, but just because it's not simply that anything a computer does is AI, right? So can you just give an idea of like, why is it that the GPS or the re- recommending restaurants based on your history and so forth why is that AI? So 
So it isn't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily have to be AI, but the way that people have implemented things is not that the GPS is, is AI, it's that the system that tries to figure out what the best route from where you are to where you want to go is run by AI. And, and the reason for that is that people figured out that AI systems did a much better job than cruder mechanisms that they had. There are ways to do this without AI. There are ways to plot routes, you know, using using parts of computer science like graph theory that most people outside of computer science don't care about. Generally speaking, my definition of AI, and I know there are lots of people who will probably quibble with this, but my definition of AI is getting a computer to do things that human beings understand intuitively but cannot describe. And recognize, how do you recognize your children or your mom when you see them? You can't actually explain it. You know, you can try explaining it, but it turns out as soon as you try that, you know, that you get bogged down in details you don't even understand about how your own brain works. Recognizing human speech and turning it into, and transcribing it into text, being able to do things like writing a poem. I can explain to a student how, but, you know, truthfully, 95% of the way that people write poems has to do, you know, is is kind of inexplicable to even to people. So what, getting a computer to do things that involve a modicum of sophistication and intelligence that we cannot explain particularly well to other human beings even, that strikes me as being the best working definition these days. And there's another level of that, which is the thing that scares all of the fear mongers who are out there trying to convince us that it's important to regulate the stuff as quickly as possible, which is building systems that can do anything human beings can do. That's called, in the parlance, artificial general intelligence. Most of the AIs we've built so far have very, very narrow areas of applicability. You know, they transcribe text, they, they help you navigate, they draw pictures in response to text being typed in. But there's an assumption that in the long run, we'll build AI systems that, are, that have much more general capabilities. And, and so people speak about artificial general intelligence as well. But AI in general, it's getting a computer to do something fuzzy. At least that's the way that I think of it. Okay, so as far as the AI to AGI transition, the idea is that you know, for a long time now, computer engines can kill humans at chess but you're not worried about the chess engine taking over the world because those are different types of tasks and you can I'm certainly I'm not solve. worried about AGIs taking over the world either. Well, I know you're not, but I'm just saying like the people the, where we're, you know, I'm, I'm building up the case for the fear mongers so that you can then knock it down. But okay. just to understand the distinctions between like AI and AGI, and, and I know there's expert systems like being systems trained to like watching videos of brain surgeries so that eventually, you know, you couple the, the artificial intelligence system with a you know robotic hand that holds a scalpel or whatever and that the machine can go ahead and do that but that particular thing wouldn't be good at playing chess because that's not what it's trained to do but whereas a human being and even there it's a little bit misleading because it's not that any one individual human is phenomenal at chess and brain surgery it's different human beings or maybe <laughs> but so anyway, even there, it's a little bit loaded in favor of humanity when we think like, oh yeah, the machines can do these one-off things, but we humans can do everything. It's like, well, not any individual. So even there, we're being a little bit unfair to the machines. Yeah, my, but, my ability to ballet dance is pretty limited. <laughs> yes, yes. You're a little false humility there, I'm sure. So, I, but do I have the idea right that that's, so the AGI means it's like, this thing is kind of a general computational machine. Like it, it, it has a broad-based intelligence. Yeah, the idea of AGI, I think roughly, is something... So, so the things that are kind of the first hints of things like that are, are systems like ChatGPT. Right. Mm -hmm. Where you can talk to it about anything, basically. And ChatGPT isn't really an AGI. It, I, I, If you've played with it, it's very impressive for a few minutes, and then you realize that it can't remember what you were talking about a few minutes ago. Because it's got a very, very limited window of things that it can remember. It's sort of a trick, the way mm -hmm. that it works. But it, nonetheless, it can do quite impressive things in spite of the fact that it, to some extent it's a trick. And I think that when people think about AGIs, they're thinking about systems like that, except far, far, far better, which you could have an unlimited length conversation with, or you could ask it to write a novel mm -hmm. and not just a few paragraphs. 
And right now right. you can mm-hmm. you can use a system like ChatGPT and you can easily ask it to write a couple of pages of text, but you can't ask it to write 500 pages of text because by the time it gets to the end, it will have forgotten what it wrote at the beginning, which is not something human beings do. Presumably in the future, we will build better systems that are capable of doing things like that. And when people talk about AGI, that's vaguely the sorts of things that they start thinking about. Something that is capable of doing complicated tasks like engineering or hosting podcasts, Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. you know, guest being a guest on a podcast. Presumably neither of us will be necessary given good enough artificial intelligence. I'm being a little sarcastic there. I mean, things that are capable of doing anything that a human being can do, or at least anything that a normal human being can do are generally speaking artificial general intelligence. And then people, you know, certain people, especially among the fear monger crowd, talk a lot about super intelligences, although to some extent we already have them in narrow areas. No, the chess computers are better than any human being at playing chess, but we still have people who play chess even professionally in spite of the fact that the computers can do it better. Hey everybody, this is Bob Murphy. Thanks for listening to this clip from the InFi podcast. If you like what you heard and want to hear more, please consider subscribing and share this video with others. We've got new episodes dropping every Friday with more insightful discussions. Stay tuned.